Say hello to the next generation of smartphone-based virtual reality. This is Google's Daydream View. Cardboard may have gotten you started with exploring virtual worlds through your phone, but Daydream View intends to take things to the next level, introducing not just a new headset, but also a wireless motion sensing controller to connect you to the action like never before. Does that make this the VR platform to beat? I'm Steven Shank with Phone Arena, showing you exactly what you can expect from Google's next-gen VR effort with my Google Daydream View review. Google's come a long way from a folded up sheet of corrugated cardboard and a couple plastic lenses, and in the short time since the original Google Cardboard made its debut, we've already seen dozens of companies improve upon that basic VR viewer design. Some stick with the core cardboard blueprint, but deliver upgrades in the form of improved headset materials or higher quality optics. Other companies, like Samsung, have gone off on their own, creating all new VR viewer hardware incorporating advanced sensor tech and introducing new ways to interact with software. Having seen all that hardware Hardware evolve, we've been understandably curious to learn how all this momentum would affect Google. Would it try to one-up Samsung with a super high-end headset of its own, or would Daydream be a more cardboard-style VR for the masses? In truth, it lands somewhere between those two extremes, but before we can tell the whole Daydream story, we've got to look at the hardware. The Daydream View headset is one of the oddest looking VR viewers we've ever come across. Instead of inexpensive cardboard or rigid precision molded plastic, the headset is covered in soft, welcoming fabric. It feels more like a well-worn favorite t-shirt than your ticket to advanced virtual worlds. While cardboard often found users manually holding their viewers to their heads, Daydream thankfully arrives with a strap so you can actually wear the headset. Instead of something like Velcro to secure it, Google uses a pair of adjustable sliders. Getting the right fit is a small process of trial and error, but it's easy enough to keep tweaking, and you should find a secure, comfortable position easily enough. Unlike the Samsung Gear VR, Daydream View lacks an over-the-head strap. We'd like to at least see the option for one, as it's a nice way to add extra security and help support heavier handsets, but even with the big Pixel XL here, the single behind-the-head strap proved comfortable enough in the end. Also unlike the Gear VR, there are no adjustable optics here, with only fixed lenses to be found. That means that anyone who wears glasses will have to keep them on, but Google's done its best to make sure that there's still room inside Daydream View for both you and your spectacles. We found things getting a bit tight with larger pairs, putting more pressure on the edges of frames than we were necessarily comfortable with, but things still work. To get started using a compatible phone with Daydream, you'll need the corresponding Daydream app on your handset. Then it's just a matter of strapping the phone in Daydream View's fold-out phone caddy. The bottom's spring-loaded and the top secures with an elastic band, and while the whole setup looks incredibly simple, we can't deny that it's quite functional. While the Daydream View headset may not be super high-tech on its own, it does have a few tricks up its sleeve. One of the coolest is a pair of capacitive nubs that lets software know where the center of the viewer is, so it can automatically center screen output to a line. There's no more trial and error guesswork to get your phone positioned just right. An embedded NFC chip in the headset also lets the phone know when it's inserted, so it can automatically fire up the Daydream app hub. Once you've been wearing Daydream for a while, and maybe working up a sweat playing some immersive 3D games, cleaning the handset is streamlined thanks to an eye insert that peels right on out. While Daydream View's largely well-built, it does feel a bit basic, and in addition to the issues we've already mentioned, you'll notice a fair amount of light leakage, with no real seal existing between the phone's edges and Daydream's lenses. The field of view is also smaller than competitors like Gear VR, sometimes making it feel like you're looking through some goggles into a distant virtual world, rather than feeling fully immersed yourself. That's about it for the headset, so what about this controller? The oblong accessory is armed with a bevy of motion sensors, letting it determine its position in 3D space. Raise it, lower it, twist it left and right, the Daydream controller will keep up. In addition to its motion controls, Google also equips the controller with a variety of hardware buttons. Your main interaction is through a capacitive thumb touchpad. This allows for easy swipe to scroll gesture controls, helping you navigate software menus. You can also click down on the whole touchpad to make selections. Below that we find a pair of additional hardware buttons, the top acting as a menu button for Daydream apps, while the bottom can bring you back out to the main Daydream app hub, or be used to recalibrate the headset and controller alike. And on the right side we find a volume rocker, freeing you from having to awkwardly reach around your phone while it's strapped into Daydream just to adjust the sound. The controller charges over USB Type-C, and can last up to 12 hours on a charge. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a way to directly check just how much battery capacity is remaining. You will get a notification when things are really low and you need to recharge imminently, but otherwise just how much power is left is anyone's guess. Google also doesn't include a charger with Daydream, asking that you reuse your phones to help keep the controller powered. The wireless controller is easily Daydream's best feature, making its apps far more interactive and engaging than what we typically saw with cardboard. 
Look to point may have sufficed back then, but actual point to point is an enormously more satisfying way to navigate a virtual environment. But while the controller is pretty successful, it also has its own problems, and drift is the biggest one there. Unlike PC VR systems like the HTC Vive, there's no external reference point for Daydream software to rely on, and as a result the controller has a tendency to slowly go out of alignment over time. One moment you're pointing dead ahead, but a few minutes later, pointing the controller straight forward results in motions that's directed more off to the side. That's easy enough to correct, just point the controller ahead, press the dimpled circle button, and Daydream instantly recalibrates its orientation. But having to perform this step time and time again quickly becomes tiresome. Okay, you've met the hardware, but that's only half the VR equation. What about the software? Your Daydream experience is focused around a virtual app hub, introducing you to new titles while also offering easy access to recently used apps. While the initial display is a bit limited, a quick point and click with the wireless controller can bring up the full Daydream Optimized Play Store, as well as your complete list of already installed apps. This is also where you access Daydream settings, so the options there are pretty limited. Some, like volume control and display recentering, are duplicates of functionality already built into the wireless controller. Others, like brightness adjustments or notification settings, are missing entirely. In order to control the latter, for instance, you're going to need to pop your phone all the way out of the headset and interact with the 2D Daydream app. Paired with a Pixel XL, Daydream software looks fantastic and feels incredibly smooth. While individual pixels are still visible, the high-res screen minimizes that distraction, and the high frame rate, low latency rendering really adds to the sense of immersion. App selection is a little limited right now, as we'd only expect for a burgeoning new VR platform, but early high production value titles from prominent developers like EA suggest we'll be seeing a lot more really compelling apps land in the months to come. We can also expect dev interest to pick up as the list of Daydream compatible phones grows and grows, giving more smartphone owners the opportunity to get in on this action. As was the case with the Samsung Gear VR, it's worth noting that Daydream VR apps can be a little on the expensive side of things. That makes sense both due to the more limited audience compared to traditional apps, as well as the technical demands of developing for a VR platform. Just don't be surprised to find yourself paying $5, $10, or even $15 for popular titles. So what's the verdict here? Well, Daydream is still in its infancy, but if you've got a Pixel or a Moto Droid Z series phone, you can get in on the ground floor. And there's a lot to like right now, from games and educational titles to the fun of exploring Google Street View in first person. While we've seen some more refinement from other VR headsets, Daydream still does a whole lot right, and is particularly easy to get started with. The wireless controller also adds a ton of value to the experience, and we can't wait to see all the ways apps find to take advantage of it. Priced at right around $80, Daydream View may be a lot more expensive than cardboard, but it does undercut Gear VR and includes its own controller as well. More apps and broader phone compatibility would make it more tempting, but both those situations are already improving. If you liked cardboard, can't afford an Oculus Rift or HTC Vive, and want to experience some of the most interesting VR software available right now, you won't go wrong with Daydream View. I'm Steven Shank with Phone Arena. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe for even more videos on their way soon.